This is the Hisense U6N, a mini LED television that punches a lot of great features for the money. It has hands-free Google voice commands. It has a fully function remote control that even include backlights. And even though it's not the most expensive television on the market, it still has a premium design. So here it is. This is the Hisense U6N. And on this video, we're gonna talk about the performance of the colors and things like that. And if you haven't already, make sure you go check out the unboxing where I go over all the inputs, do gaming, and also made a calibration video on it as well. So go check that out right after this. But the U6N is available in a 55 inch all the way up to 85 inch on United States models. Local dimming zones are very important because that helps control the black levels across the screen to make sure you get better contrast. And if you notice on some TVs, you get this gray area on there when you're watching movies in the dark and that local dimming zone helps out on this particular television. For people who's over in Europe, they do make this television, but it's available in 50 inch all the way up to 75 inch. And keep in mind on both series, the 75 inch is an ADS IPS panel. So you're gonna get better viewing angles, but just a little bit less contrast. Here's the inputs on a UK model. And as you can see, it has the CI slot, which the United States models don't have. And the software is powered by Vita, where this one uses Google TV. Vita is a decent software. I only had a few experiences with it. And from reading the comments, you guys don't like Vita. Maybe Hisense will see this video and realize that they need to put Google TV in all their models. But I'm pretty sure there's some reasons why they go with Vita instead of Google. And it could be paying for licensing. Being that this is a VA panel, I want to show you the viewing angles. And to me, it actually does pretty good. A lot of times when you get over to the side of the television, you usually get a lot of coloration in the image. And this TV is not perfect, but it holds its own for the price point. If you have a lot of windows or lights in your house, you might want to consider going up to the U7N or the U8N because this TV doesn't have good anti-glare coatings on it. So you will see a lot of glare on it in comparison to those more expensive models. But keep in mind, this is a budget model in comparison. Since this is a 4K television, upscaling is very important because that's taking your old content like DVD players, old movies, anything you have in your thumb drives and be able to see them in a better resolution. And this TV does a pretty decent job. And here's a 480p demo so you can take a look at the resolution on it. One thing to point out here is that 480p will not fill out the screen just because of the resolution. But thanks to those local dimming zones, you don't have all that gray area on the side. And this TV has a zoom feature, but again, you can't stretch out the screen to fit and it probably wouldn't look that good. But as we get into 7P resolution, which is 16 by nine, so it does fill the screen, it looks a lot better. And of course, the 1080p signal is gonna look even better, but to get the best resolution, you definitely wanna use native 4K content. But in order to get the 4K content, you're gonna need to have a UHD Blu-ray player, or you can do streaming apps like Hulu, Netflix, Prime Video and a few other out there. But when it comes to upscaling, I think it's a decent television to give you a good enough signal where you'll pretty much be happy with it. Picture quality is the most important thing when watching a television. And I want to show you some demos so you can see how well the black levels perform on this television. Now I was a little concerned when I first got it because I've reviewed the U7N and the U8N and I seen how those televisions performed. And the fact that this TV has less local dimming zones, I thought that I would see some gray areas on the screen. But to my surprise, the colors popped, that was very vivid, and I will tell you that the black levels are very inky, especially for the fact that this is where Hisense start on their mini LED series. In far as movies, I think this is a great starter television, especially if you just wanna watch something that has a lot of great colors to it. You can definitely be happy with it overall. Now I want to switch to the SDR picture profiles so you can see some of the different pictures that this TV can produce. And chances are you won't be using vivid mode, but if you flip through here, I think standard mode is gonna be great for everyday TV watching. Theater mode is gonna be better for your movie watching. And one of the great things about the U6N is that it has 600 nits of peak brightness, meaning that this TV will get bright enough to play that content and give you all that details that those movies has to offer. I'm using an Apple TV to put the U6N in HDR mode. And as I switch to these picture profiles, you can see that it is gonna get you a bright picture, a detailed picture, but I wanna point out that it doesn't support IMAX, but it will support HDR10, HLG, HDR10 Plus, and Dolby Vision IQ. Speaking of HDR, I want to show you another example of that. 
and the darker areas are the HDR and as you can see it brings in a lot more contrast and details where the SDR is a little bit more flat but I will tell you that this TV will look great on your everyday content or HDR content so you're going to get a really good movie experience but I did have one problem and that's on low bitrate content meaning that if you don't have a really good source I did notice that you had a few artifacts in the signal and after going through the settings this TV does not have gradient control to smooth things out so only settings that I found in here was noise reduction and that did help a little bit and for those who remember Hisense did add that feature to some of the other televisions to make sure that it didn't have that issue but I had to think about it this way this is a budget television and your expectations shouldn't be so high because there's a lot more TVs in this price range that don't even have the features that this one has. When it comes to sports, this TV does a pretty good job. I will tell you that some of the content that I was watching on it was low bit rate again, and we cannot control the cameras that these companies use to film these different events. So I feel that the motion on this television is pretty decent, but keep in mind, if you have, again, low bit rate content coming from bad cameras at the networks, that's not really much you can do to clean it up. So that's something we just have to live with. Overall performance, I think this U6N is a great budget television. As you can see in these skin tones that this TV produces a very natural picture. And when I went through the different picture profiles, I want to find the best one for you guys. So I would recommend standard for your everyday TV watching and then just switch it over to theater whenever you're watching movies and you won't have anything to worry about. And when it comes to uniformity of the panel itself, I would say that you're going to get a little bit of darker edges on the sides and that's pretty common for most televisions because of the backlights but I will say that it is not that bad. I've seen a lot of other TVs that are really bad plus they have light bleeds and I didn't notice anything like that on this panels. So even though the panel is not completely uniformed it's not something you're going to notice on a daily basis. Now let's take a listen to the audio system because some people don't want to add sound bars. I think you need a sound bar. This TV has 10 watts by 2 and after reviewing the U7N and the U8N that has subwoofers, I found the sound on this television to be okay, but it's nothing like the other models that I just mentioned. This is a Tech Steve audio test for the next few moments. Sit quietly and experience the range of this TV's audio capabilities as we test the boundaries of sound. This is the end of the Tech Steve's audio test and transmission. So for me, the audio system is not going to be something you want to watch movies on. We all been to a theater and got that full surround sound effect. So get yourself a soundbar audio system. But if you're going to put it in the bedroom, maybe it'll be okay. Now, the last thing I want to show you is some of the basic features in the menu system, because some people want to know if it supports uh, casting your phone and things like that. So uh, let's check it out. The U6N has the same software that you're going to find in the U7 and U8N and I would say that it's pretty snappy overall. As you can see as I go through this menu, it's pretty quick to response and I'm not seeing any type of lag or anything like that. So the processor in this television is doing a really good job. Now it does have a TV tuner in here, but you can use Google TV where you can stream different content. Plus you can watch movies, some news and some different options inside of here. You do have an app store. Again, this is powered by Google TV. So any kind of application that you can think of will be in here. There's a web browser. There's a device assistance to clean up the Android software. And over here, you can plug in a thumb drive and share that media and play it on the screen. Now inside the settings, there's a lot of different options. But one thing I like to always do is go check out the inputs. And as you can see here, it's set up as automatic and it is set up for enhanced. The reason they want to do that is because if the TV is in standard format, you will not be able to get 4K content, plus it's not that good for gaming. And there's plenty of sound effects, like it will support Dolby Atmos, as well as automatic volume control, lip sync features, and you do have a fiber optic, plus you can connect Bluetooth speakers and wired headphones 
Or if you don't want to see the TV, you can do audio only and it'll turn off the screen and leave the music playing. The last few things I want to show you, if you go into the setup menu, you can see that it is powered by Android 12, which is the newest version of Google TV. It has only 5.9 gigabytes of storage. I think with the cost of storage right now, they definitely could increase that on newer televisions. And it does have the ambient mode like you get on all Google TVs. So it will display either these built-in wall arts or you can use your Google account to connect it to your family pictures. Now, as far as casting, you can send over your Android device and you can control it through Wi-Fi. It does support the Apple AirPlay and HomeKit, so you can connect it to your HomeKit. And again, if you want to use the voice commands, you can do features like, what's the weather like today? Today, it'll be foggy with a forecasted high of 75. And the cool thing is if you have it to search for an application and it's not installed in the television, look at that, it will download it automatically. So I showed you just about everything you need to know. And I will tell you that the Bloomin' is not bad because of the local dimming zones and all that good stuff. So I didn't share the demo with you, but there's a few things to consider before you run out and buy this television. First of all, if you're a gamer, this is a 60 Hertz television with a motion rate of 240. So what that means, if you watch in movies that are in 24 frames per second, the motion rate helps add some frames and clean everything up so that movie looks much smoother. Now, if you have a low bitrate signal, meaning that you're using a low quality source, it could be IPTV or something like that, you might complain about motion. Now, I'm not gonna say this is perfect, but here's what you could do to try to clean up some of that soap opera effect or bad motion. If you go into the picture settings, you will see something called clarity. And under clarity, you're gonna see right here where it says motion enhancement. Now, from the factory, it's set up as standard, but if you switch over, you can go to one that says custom. Now, once it's in custom, this is where you can control the smoothness of the image through Jutter. So you just move this up and down until you find one that you like. Unfortunately, this is not a set it and forget it type of thing. You might have to change it per show, but you can choose one of the inputs and then you can kind of customize it so it stays on the input. But that's just one thing you can do. Now you can calibrate this TV. As you can see right here, there are settings for it. But if you go with the U7N or the U8N, it has Calman Automatics calibration. So if anyone has a software, they can plug in some meters and the TV will calibrate itself. We're here, you have to manually do it. So it is a lengthy process, which might cause you more money. But other than that, I was pretty happy with this television, except for the audio. Again, I would probably get a sound bar, but when it comes to just watching TV, watching movies, the black levels are good, the clarity is good. So with that being said, I think this is a good buy for someone who's looking for a little bit above budget television, I would say at this point but want to get really good performance and really accurate colors. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Our goal is 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. The last thing I want to mention, if you want to post your television or ask questions, be sure to head over to 4K TV chat. You can join for free and I'll chime in from time to time, see if I can help you out with some different scenarios. Thanks all for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.